Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Venom Vlog. And today we have some comic book news. A lot of people have been wondering who's going to take over Venom after Donnie Cates. What kind of story are they going to tell? Uh, where, what direction are they going to go in now that Donnie and Ryan Stegman are heading off to other work and other books? Um, you know, what's going to happen? And a lot of people, myself included, kind of speculated, oh, they're just going to rebrand Venom and Donnie is still going to write it. It's just not going to be called Venom because I think they teased early on that uh, in, in you know Donnie's run that Venom is not the actual name of the costume, which is like, yeah, we knew that. Like, Venom is when it's bonded with Eddie. So we knew that it, it its name wasn't Venom, but I guess it did have an actual name, uh, I guess. Uh, kind of like how the movies do, where they gave all the symbiotes actual names. So, um, so anyway, so we were kind of theorizing, oh, maybe it's that plot thread coming back to tie up the run now that it's over. And maybe in Venom 200, they'll say that his name isn't actually Venom and he'll go by a new name. And whatever uh, but i guess he's the king in black and so we thought oh maybe they'll just do a king in black book with donnie well all that apparently was wrong unless that's coming later i don't know um but it looks like this is what's going to be happening uh definitively for the venom character and it'll be arriving in november so not till you know after the movie comes out and everything and that is a new venom book which kind of feels like Venom Space Knight in a way, or Captain Universe Venom a little bit. They redesigned the symbol um, again uh, a bit. And uh, and it's written by Al Ewing and uh, Rom V. Uh, v for Venom, I guess. <laughs> Maybe that's how he, he got the job. Actually, Rom V is a really good writer, and I've been reading some of his DC stuff, and I've been liking it. Uh, I think that Rom's been doing Swamp Thing and also uh, the Justice League Dark backup stories in the Justice League book, which is kind of really the only reason I've been continuing to buy the Justice League book because I kind of like what Rom is doing in the backup stories. Uh, so crazy, right? I'm paying $5 for a book for like a little eight page story in the back, but it, it's pretty decent. So, and, and Al Ewing has been doing some really great stuff at Marvel with like Immortal Hulk. And now that that's wrapping up, it's basically Al bringing that kind of revitalization of a character and that kind of uh, mindset to Venom. Because obviously Al has been revamping the Guardians of the Galaxy team, adding new members like Doctor Doom, and sending him on this big mission. So I feel like now that Venom's going to be going out into space, that we're probably going to get, you know, a Venom that once again teams up with the Guardians of the Galaxy, or probably will cross over with that book at some point since they both exist in space. And I know space is a big place, uh, but I feel like there's still room to probably cross over, especially when you have Al writing both books. Um, so I don't know how this is going to work if Al came up with the plot or idea and Rom is just like executing the the, the um, basics of the script, like the dialogue and stuff, or if there's more back and forth between them, if they both worked on the script together. Like it's they don't really clarify that in this article. And I'm going to put a link to this down below. This is from Marvel's website specifically. So I didn't want to get the news secondhand from like Bleeding Cool or anyone else where they're going to throw in their own speculation. I wanted just to get the raw information from Marvel. So, yeah, we have this. Coming out in November, um, Ewing and, and uh, award-winning author Rom V, a titan of terror in his own right, will work together to lend a dramatic and dangerous air to this twisted new vision of Venom. Rounding out this symbiote hive mind will be legendary artist Brian Hitch, whose artwork you've probably seen pop up on screen. Uh, and I'll put the second image up there because uh, he released two images for this book. Um, so I guess these might be the two covers. One of them, this image here, is the more traditional Venom one. And the other one I showed earlier is the one where he looks a little bit Space Knighty. And he's got some other symbiotes behind him in the background. And they use the term hive mind. Uh, when it's but they're talking about the creative team obviously but I feel like that could be the case with the book itself maybe Venom is when it says we are Venom maybe it's like we are Legion and that's what I was kind of thinking when I saw this cover with all the other symbiotes behind him is that it's like oh maybe he's like we are Legion and maybe like Null he can control the symbiotes now and put them on other beings if he wants and maybe this is how he's going to go through the galaxy from now on is it's Eddie Brock maybe in the suit flying through the universe with all these other symbiotes and and trying to help, I guess, I, I, and trying to be the reverse of how Noel was, where he was trying to terrorize everyone. Maybe this is more like, you know, a, a Star trek -y thing where, you know, Venom's going out there to, you know, be more peaceful to everyone. I have no idea. So we'll have to see when the book comes out, I guess, uh, what they're going to do. But uh, it says here, there's a quote here from um, Ron V. When my editors at Marvel reached out about uh, taking on Venom alongside Al Ewing and Brian Hitch, I was not prepared for the kind of creative thrill it has been ever since. 
This story is going to expand and push the symbiote narrative and lore in even more unexpected and fantastic directions. It is also an utter thrill having the sort of call and response mechanic I've had with a writer like Al and an artist like Brian's uh, on Brian's caliber. Uh, fans and new readers, strap in. You ain't seen nothing yet. Um, I'll be honest with you. I get really, I roll my eyes every time someone says, this is the next big thing. This is changing everything. Uh, you, ha you haven't seen anything and blah, blah, blah. It's like, yeah, of course. Well, we you're right. We haven't seen nothing yet. We've seen two images. Uh, so you're right uh, in a technical level, uh, but uh, or or an actual level, you know, a direct level. But um, but I feel like I've heard this, uh, you know, this speech a bunch of times, which is we're going to take this in a whole new direction. We're going to do these all, all new things. And that's great. I, like I always say, you want different interpretations of characters. That's how they last for as long as they do is by getting different takes on them. And we've but the problem with me with Marvel is that they don't do different takes anymore. They just do takes that have already occurred. Uh, like look at all the event books that have happened over the years from like uh, Avengers vs. X-Men till now. All of those event books are just just new versions of old books that have happened before. Like the Avengers and the X-Men have fought dozens of times before, even in a book called, you know, I think X-Men vs. Avengers or X-Men and, and Avengers. And uh, and then they, you know, do that. They have Bendis to that series. And then we've had, um, you know, all these, like uh, currently we have Heroes Reborn. But if like Heroes Reborn, when you look at it, it's like, okay, well, that's just um, Age of Apocalypse, basically, because you have Blade, who has still has this memory of the old world, much like Bishop in Age of Apocalypse had memories of the old world. And now he's trying to, you know, reset it back to the way it was or, or try to figure out some answers or like Flashpoint did that too. But I'm just trying to, like Marvel's copying Marvel. Like they just, they're looking back. So they're like, all right, let's take Age of Apocalypse, but let's name it Heroes Reborn. And, uh, and then mash them together. And then we'll have a couple mashup characters uh, like they did with Infinity Warps, which was just basically their version of Amalgam. And now just a couple years later, they're kind of doing that again. Uh, they're doing their own like Amalgam thing, uh, but just mixing Marvel characters together, like, you know, or, or having the symbiote be on Red Skull or whatever the story is. And it's just it's just regurgitation and recycling. That's That's all their ideas are. So this to me just feels like another Space Knight idea and Space Knight wasn't that long ago, uh, and we actually just covered it on the on the show. So I saw people being surprised when I posted this on Instagram, saying I wasn't very excited about it. I'm not excited about this, um, but that's okay. Like it doesn't mean it's you know I still will probably read it. Um, I'm just gonna wait till it comes out in trade paperback. Uh, but the one thing I definitely wanted to clarify here with this run is that. It's coming out in November, and there's going to be a, a precursor to it on Free Comic Book Day, which will be August 14th this year. So make sure you visit your local comic shop on August 14th and pick up the Free Comic Book Day Spider-Man Venom issue, because that is going to kind of be a precursor to this series, I guess, after the events of Venom 200, which comes out, I think, in this month or next month. Uh, it's coming up soon. So, um, so to me, though, I am... Um, they can go off in this direction and do their thing. The last book that we are going to review that is that will be current will be Extreme Carnage. That's going to be a you know I figured those are those are coming out like two issues at a time in July, August, and September leading up to the movie's release. So we just I want Carnage content you know to lead us to the movie because we're going to be getting a lot of movie news around that time and I don't want to dive too much more into the comics. I want to be actually finished with all the comic history. Um, up to date, like, you know, getting us up to date by the end of July. That's my plan is to get through all the Peter Parker, uh, Black Symbiote costume saga stuff, the alien costume saga, and then get through any of the lingering stories we haven't got through in the 616 universe, maybe a couple side stories and side universe stuff, and try to get all that done by the end of July. So that way in August, we can just start focusing on the movie as more movie news hopefully starts coming in. And, uh, and then we'll also review Extreme Carnage every time an issue comes out. But after that, I uh, we're, we are officially going to end this show. Like after the second movie comes out, we'll follow it until the Blu-ray and DVD comes out, which I imagine will happen around November-ish. So I think we're going to be done talking about a lot of Venom stuff before this book even comes out. And so I don't know if I'll actually cover this issue when it drops. And I'm certainly not, though, going to cover this series as each issue drops. Um, we've done this show for over a little over four years or around four years. And, uh, and that's a long time. And we will have had probably 700 plus episodes by the time this comic book comes out in November. And to me, I'm like, I, I'm, I'm tired. And uh, we've said, I think everything we can say about Venom, um, at least, you know, uh, given my perspective, 
you guys know how I feel about the character. You know what I like and dislike by this point. So I feel like this, to me, is a good jumping off point. Uh, Space Knight did not really hold my interest that much. It was a neat concept, but I was glad when it ended. And as soon as Flash came back to Earth, those were my favorite three issues, was Venom back on Earth. And I know that it's like, hey, you know, I always want change and I want evolution for characters and things like that. So I'm glad they are telling stories of Venom going into space and doing other things. But in the end, those aren't my favorite types of stories, or at least they haven't been so far. This has a good creative team, so I feel like this could have. You know, this has a good chance of being awesome and succeeding. So this is not me trying to crap on this. This is just me seeing this as a good jumping away point. Uh, but let me know what your point of view is. Like, are you very excited for this? You should be, by the way. Like I said, this has a great creative team on it. Uh, from although I'm wondering how long Brian Hitch will be on it as artist, uh, but he did do a good run on uh, Just League for a while. So. Who knows maybe he can stick it out for you know 12 or 24 issues and that would be great i mean maybe taking breaks in between obviously um if he does take breaks bring in iban coelho i would love to see him you know do the fill-in on stuff on this um or put iban on the flash thompson book if they have a flash thompson book set on earth i would really like to see that too but with them just going off and being like hey i want to tell new i want to expand on the mythology i want to tell you know you thought you knew about symbiotes but you didn't We've had a revamping origins for symbiotes probably four or five times now, and I'm I'm kind of done. Like I, I feel like you, they've gone to that well so many times that I'm kind of over learning more about the symbiotes. I feel like we have a really good grasp of what symbiotes are and what their purpose was, um, and then they got changed. Then Noel came along and that ruined kind of a little bit what you know Bendis had done, and then which you know i don't really care too much about but then bendis what he set up was was kind of a, a kind of spat in the face a little bit of planet of symbiotes and and so you have all these different interpretations and at this point i'm just kind of like look let's just say the symbiotes were once a peaceful race and they got corrupted and then maybe you know no then they had a trap null at some point and let's just say all that works and it, and it fits in a nice little bubble okay, it's good. You have your definitive story now. You don't need to keep rocking that boat or keep going to that well to show, oh, well, symbiotes are really this and symbiotes can really do that. And all. it's like, yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm a little hesitant when I hear authors and writers and stuff in comics say that because to me, this is just them trying to, now that Donnie has put his stamp on the origins of Venom and the symbiotes, it's now them going, okay, now we're going to do our version. So that way, if Marvel ever does, you know, more movies of Venom, they can pull from our comics. And that's pretty much what most writers at Marvel are assigned to do now is to do these new origins and add new mythology to these characters. So that way, you know, that's set up for, you know, future films. And that's pretty much all this is. And to be honest, that just kind of bores me. I just want, you know, a Venom miniseries again where he's on the streets, uh, you know, of New York or San Francisco, you know, and getting involved in people's lives with a, with a great supporting cast and all that stuff. And so we'll see if this comic delivers on that. Um, but uh, but like I said, I will probably I'll probably buy the first issue out of curiosity to check it out, um, but I probably won't cover it on the show. Maybe or maybe not. That's a coin toss. But I promise you that after issue one, I definitely will not cover the book monthly because I just that I I need the I need to cut the ties at some point to wrap up this show. And I think this is a good place to end it on. <laughs> um, so. Uh, so, yeah, let me know your thoughts down below. I've rambled long enough. Let me know your thoughts down below. and We'll continue the conversation as always down there. Thanks so much for watching the show. Like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And I'll see you all in the future. Peace.